Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Glad that you could uh, join us once again. Our guest is Dr. Alyssa Dweck. She's joining us on the program to talk about a new study concerning lactating and breastfeeding that's been supplemented with a very unique B3 vitamin. And I'll uh, let Dr. Dweck tell us a little bit about her background, and um, we'll jump right into this this brand new study about lactating and this B3 vitamin. Thank you so much for joining us on the program, Dr. Dweck. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Uh, a bit of background about yourself for our listeners. Yes, thank you. So I'm an OBGYN. I've been in practice for about 25 years here in New York. And I really was very excited to learn about some newer studies involving a vitamin B3 supplement that may be a real uh, game changer for the lactation world, if you will. So by way of background, um, I take care of patients of all ages, uh, including uh, pregnant and uh, lactating women. And, you know, women who are nursing are always looking to enhance the quality of their milk, enhance the volume of their milk, and also, uh, you know, a, a, another thing that lots of postpartum women are looking for is to get back into shape after they've had a baby. So I was um, incredibly surprised and very excited to learn about a new study that came out, and this is a preclinical study, so it's done on rodents, that suggests that supplementing uh, lactating moms with a vitamin B3 called uh, niagen or uh, nicotinamide riboside, which is a a form of vitamin B3, might actually enhance the uh, volume of milk produced when compared to rodent moms who were not taking this supplement. It may help to enhance the quality of the milk and as an aside and and a little extra, helped these rodent moms lose weight faster than their uh, counterpart rodents who were not getting this supplement. So we, I found this to be very exciting. And of course, further research is needed to apply this in the clinical population in humans. But, you know, it's a first start and uh, exciting research. Well, let's, uh, let's start by talking about this quality that you mentioned. Um, you know, women are lactating. They're, I mean, doesn't nature uh, provide quality milk for a lactating mother to provide to her child? Yes, absolutely. So, um, you know, of course, nature provides for this, but some of it is also environmentally dependent. So women uh, who have good diets uh, will have as good of milk as they can produce on their own. In addition, we typically advise an increasing caloric intake during lactation, about 300 calories a day. And so that's important. But if you think about it, we we always advise women to continue their prenatal vitamins while nursing. So this is a supplement that might, again, this hasn't been studied in humans yet, but I think that's coming down the pike. Uh, but a supplement may be uh, helpful to, to uh, be in addition to a prenatal vitamin to help with quantity and quality of milk. So it's, it's interesting. And listen, this is where we learn this stuff is when we start out with rodent studies or, you know, preclinical studies and then hopefully apply it to humans. I'd like to also bring up the fact that I do recommend this supplement for women outside of that lactation group, particularly my menopause population, because these are women who are suffering with, you know, sleep deprivation and interruption, physical discomforts of hot flashes, et cetera, and they're looking for ways to enhance their energy. So I typically will recommend the supplement uh, vitamin B3 in an effort to enhance cellular metabolism and enhance energy. So, and this has been studied in human trials and has been shown to be safe and effective. So, I think it's exciting to think about that as well. So, in the human trials that we've done on this uh, particular B3, we know mm-hmm. that it alleviates some of the symptoms of menopause. And uh, because of that, we've gone into the studying this, the quality of the milk and how the quality is enhanced with uh, prenatal vitamins. And you're talking about possibly supplementing those prenatal vitamins with this B3 supplement. How does it um, increase the quantity of uh, breast milk in these uh, test subjects? 
the findings were notable and statistically significant in the preclinical studies to suggest that the quantity of milk, breastfeeding time, and the um, quality of milk based on protein and lipid content, et cetera, were noted in uh, their studies. In these subjects, were the tests run with prenatal vitamins, per se, different types, along with the supplement, or was it done with just the supplement? And those results uh, were noted. Uh, again, these are in rodent trials. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, it was just the supplement and a typical diet. But um, I would have to, again, defer to the researcher for the exact uh, method. Um, but um, again, when they compared the group that did not get this supplement with the group of rodents that did, the, the findings were certainly statistically significant and notable. What were the findings when the offspring were tested as far as nutritional boost or any energy boost, anything like that, when they were feeding from these uh, test subjects? Right. So the uh, rodent pups were noted to have both physical and cognitive performance Ah. enhancements. So this is, again, another very exciting uh, point to think about if it can be applied to uh, human trials. But basically, um, they do these typical rodent tests um, to test for increased physical aptitude, and that was noted. Um, they um, found a, a capacity for increased resiliency, and um, this is usually tested with things like maze tests and uh, light and dark tests and, um, you know, behavioral uh, measures. Um, Again, I focus my practice on humans, so I think that, uh, you know, these are exciting preclinical studies, but I'm not the person sitting in the lab watching these rodents. Uh, But it's exciting, and, you know, all of these uh, human uh, trials are based on positive findings from preclinical trials, so I think this is exciting, and I, I look forward to Uh, future information as it would apply to uh, women. You know, when we're talking about um, the cognitive uh, skill increase, uh, the um, levels of energy that were increased, sometimes I I understand that women, they may start out breastfeeding and it's wonderful, but then they decide, you know, maybe this isn't for me. Uh, Yes. Does this supplement lend itself to um, breast pumps or um, things of that nature? And when it comes to deciding that maybe this uh, breastfeeding isn't for me, does Mm -hmm. this supplement make uh, the rodent pups like the milk more, maybe wanting to breastfeed for a longer period of time as opposed to using supplements or no supplements at all? Well, it did seem in this rodent study that the um, breastfeeding time was lengthened compared to the pups who were not using the uh, supplement. So uh, I would say that I'm hoping that will translate into uh, human studies as well. Um, As far as pumped milk, the uh, quality and quantity of pumped milk shouldn't be any different than uh, what's produced naturally. Um, So I, I think that speaks for itself. In your opinion, what do you think is the future uh, of this research? I mean, it, you, you called it a game changer in the uh, early part of our conversation. Are we talking right. a couple, three years or maybe a decade or two down the road before this is something that's basically mainstream and par for the course mm-hmm. when it comes to uh lactating mothers. Yeah. You know, we are very, very cautious in the obstetrical world about what we recommend to our moms, uh, both during pregnancy and nursing. So we are not there yet. As far as 10 or 20 years, I hope it's not that far off. Uh, So I know there are ongoing studies now, so I'm hoping that the results are sooner rather than later. Dr. Dweck, I'd like to direct our listeners to uh, some places online where they can go and get some more information about well, about you and about um, this this B three vitamin. vitamin, this vitamin, and um, maybe get some more information uh, for the for ourselves. Sure, sure. So uh, my website, my personal website, is drdweck dot com, mm-hmm. and uh, there's uh, plenty of information there about me and what I do. And um, I would refer your listeners to the Chromadex 
or True Niagen websites to learn more about the supplement because we are recommending it for women now, not necessarily pregnant or lactating women. And the trials that I spoke about are on clinicaltrials.gov, which will be very helpful for the more scientifically minded. Right, great. Now, in wrapping up very briefly, I understand that you've co-authored uh, two or three books. Could you give us those titles and um, let us know whether or not we can get them online? Oh, absolutely. And thank you for asking. So my latest book is called The Complete A to Z for Your V. Uh, just a kind of a humorous but very informative book about all things gynecology. So I, I recommend it for uh, women and men to learn more. And it's fun. Um, and then um, my uh, second book was um, a book about libido, mainly meant for clinicians to help with their patients to enhance their sexual drives. It's called The Sexual Spark, and that's on Amazon as well. I thank you so much for joining us on the program this morning. It's been a pleasure, Dr. Dweck. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You as well. You've been listening okay. to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of the program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, listen in and download at SoundCloud, and be sure and visit our affiliates page at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. Thank you for listening to Health Professional Radio. We're very proud to be an independent broadcaster providing our content free of charge to you, the listener. One of the ways that we're able to remain free and independent is by having people like you become patrons. You can support Health Professional Radio simply by visiting hpr.fm and clicking the button that says Become a Patron. Your patronage of even just $1 a month lets us know that you're there, which in turn makes us more valuable to advertisers. And, of course, if you're able to afford more, then we would certainly appreciate the support. My name is Toby Longhurst from Health Professional Radio please visit hpr.fm, click the Become a Patron button and support us if you can.